Stop pouring this away. Every time you rinse or soak lentils, you create a simple, free plant food. And today I'm testing it properly. I fed diluted lentil water to my tomatoes for seven days and compared it side by side with a normal watering routine. If you love clean, low-cost gardening that actually works in US and AMP, Canada homes and backyards, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe so you don't miss the rest of this series and let's run the test. Quick context before we start, I garden in a typical North American backyard with plenty of sun and basic potting soil, nothing fancy. This is a beginner-friendly experiment that's apartment safe, pet and kid aware, and chemical free. I'm not promising miracles. I'm measuring a small realistic change you can copy at home. What exactly is lentil water? It's simply the water left after soaking or rinsing lentils, the same water many people pour down the drain. Because lentils naturally contain small amounts of nutrients and amino acids, that leftover water can act like a very gentle feed. The keyword here is gentle. We're not dumping a thick slurry onto roots. We're using a light, clean dilution so we help the plant, not the mold. Here's the safety setup. Strain the water so there's no pulp. For dilution, I'm using one part lentil water to three parts clean water. If your lentil water smells sour or looks cloudy in a bad way, throw it out and make a fresh batch. Use it the same day if possible. In the fridge, keep it no longer than 24 hours. If you're in an apartment, water lightly and make sure no tray sits with stagnant water. We want moisture, not a swamp. Now the experiment. I'm using two identical pots with the same soil, same plant type, and placed in the same light. One is a tante control, plain water own. The other is the test, the diluted lentil water schedule. I'll check three simple things, height, leaf color, and leaf turgor. That firm hydrated feel you notice when a plant is happy. I measured both plants on day zero. They started nearly identical with similar height and neutral, healthy leaves. Feeding plan. I'm giving the test plant a light feed on day one, then again on day three and day six. In between, I water both plants normally, keeping the soil evenly moist, but not drenched. That's important. Lentil water doesn't replace watering. It's just a gentle supplement. And more is not better. Overfeeding or using a concentrated mix is the fastest way to cause smell, fungus gnats, or limp, overwet roots. Let's talk about common mistakes so you don't make them. First, don't use undiluted starchy water straight from the pot. That's a recipe for sour smells and anaerobic soil. Second, don't leave your mix out warm for days. Use it fresh. Third, don't drown the plant. If the surface stays glossy wet for hours, you've given too much. And finally, don't feed every single day. Gentle, spaced out applications are safer and more realistic. Day by day, I watched for small signs. Early on, I wasn't expecting a dramatic jump in height. I looked for density in the top growth, slight deepening of green, and any change in leaf firmness. I also watched for negatives, surface slime, a sour odor, or gnats, because if those show up, the free fertilizer just turned into a headache. Good news, with a clean strain and the 1.3 dilution, the soil stayed sweet, the smell stayed neutral, and there were no pests. By the end of day seven, here's the side-by-side. -side. The test plant looks a touch fuller up top with a slightly richer tone on new leaves. Height is similar, but the canopy feels a bit more alive, if that makes sense. A little firmer to the touch, and a little more willing to perk up after morning sun. Is it a night and day transformation? No, is it a cheap, safe experiment you can repeat? Absolutely. So who should try this? If you cook lentils anyway, you've got a free input ready to test. If you grow on a balcony or in a small backyard and want agental nudge for seedlings or leafy plants, this is a low risk step. If you already have rich soil and great compost, you might see less of a difference. Still, it's a smart way to reuse what you already have. If you're chasing big blooms or heavy fruit set, consider this a baseline. 
You can pair it with other clean methods later in the series. Let me give you a simple routine you can copy this week. Strain thoroughly. If you can see pulp, keep straining. Dilute to 1-3, one, one part lentil water, three parts clean water. Feed lightly every few days, not daily. Keep normal watering consistent for both control and test plants. If the mix smells off or the soil stays wet and cold, stop and reset. Watch leaves, not just height. Color, firmness, and density tell the story. Troubleshooting fast. If leaves get pale, you may be overwatering or the plant needs more light rather than more feed. If you notice a slight film on the soil, gently rake the top half inch to let it breathe and cut back your volume next time. If fungus gnats appear, let the top layer dry out between waterings, use sticky traps briefly, and confirm you didn't make the mix too strong. Let's talk expectations. Natural inputs like this work best as steady small winds. Over a season, those small winds compound. Slightly healthier leaf tissue resists stress better. Slightly calmer soil biology bounces back faster after heat or a mist watering. Think of lentil water as part of a clean toolkit, not a magic potion. Later in this series, I'll test banana peel tea against a store fertilizer, a no-smell countertop compost routine for apartments, and a tote-style worm bin for people who want super fertilizer in a month, so make sure you're subscribed. Before we wrap, a quick word on pets and kids. Keep any liquid feed out of reach, label your jar, and rinse well if anything spills indoors. Outdoors, light, diluted applications are safest. If you garden where raccoons are curious, water early so there's no lingering food scent at night. My takeaways after seven days. Lentil water, when strained and diluted properly, is a tidy, beginner-friendly experiment. It won't replace good soil or sunlight, but it can give your plants a gentle push, especially in containers that lose nutrients faster. It's also a great mindset shift. Instead of throwing away potential, you're turning everyday kitchen habits into small garden gains. If you try this at home, start with just one test pot so you can really see the difference. Share your results in the comments and tell me your city and state or province. It helps other viewers across North America compare what works in different climates. And if you got value today, give this video a like so YouTube shows it to more home growers. For the next episode, we're finally going to answer the internet's favorite question. Does banana peel tea actually beat a store fertilizer in a fair test? Same plants, same light, measured results. It's already queued up. Click it on the end screen or find the link in the pinned comment. I'll see you there. Educational only. Results always vary by soil, climate, and plant type. Test small, watch your plants, and adjust on to one to common sense. Thanks for watching Free Plant Food Lab USN AMP Canada. Now watch next Banana Peel Tea versus Store Fertilizer. Real side by side.